Coming up on First at Four, a group from Iowa is helping rebuild homes in one eastern Kentucky county. And Tiger Woods lawyers are responding in court to claims from the golfer's ex-girlfriend who sued to void a non-disclosure agreement she signed in 2017. Plus, widespread frost and freeze on the docket tonight. Details on when we warm up straight ahead as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, a group from Iowa made their way to Letcher County this week. The group of 20 adults and youth are helping Homes, Inc. build houses for people who lost theirs in last year's July flood. Tim Maxa was a pastor in Letcher County more than 20 years ago and says he knew he needed to bring a group to help. This is where I served 10 years as a pastor and so my heart was pretty heavy and wondering if we could come and help and in January Presbyterian Disaster Assistance said we're ready for volunteers to come and help rebuild. All of the students with Tim chose to come and help for their spring break. I wish we had better spring weather for them. We'll hear more about what they're trying to do tonight at 6. A one Breathitt County nonprofit is helping its community become more sustainable. The Breathitt County Hunger Alliance held a giveaway today in Jackson, offering 40,000 pounds of seed potatoes and thousands of garden seed packets. Those with the organization say this event was geared toward helping the community, particularly those impacted by the flood, to become more sustainable. Right now you go to the grocery store, you get two bags and you come out two, three hundred dollars. Who can afford that? I can't, you know, and uh, stuff and, and people around here can't, you know, who can, you know, and stuff. So anything that we can do, uh, not only for ourselves, but for our children, you know, we need to teach our children what we were taught. This giveaway was made possible through the Hunger Alliance's partnership with the nonprofit Society of St. Andrew. The Breathitt County Hunger Alliance aims to host food giveaways on the third Saturday of each month. We want to remind you to go to our website, WYMT.com, to vote on our poll question. Do you believe daylight saving time should be done away with? You can see the numbers at the bottom of your screen. About 76% say yes, while roughly 24% say no, about the same as yesterday. If you've not voted yet, you still have until tomorrow to let us know. Cloudy skies continue out there this afternoon. We've seen several rounds of flurries push through as well, especially in our higher elevations. Actually did a little sticking to the grassy surfaces out there, and we'll continue to see things, though, try to clear out as we head through tonight. Here's the view from our studios here in Hazard. It is cloudy right now, and that continues region-wide. There's the view from Moorhead, where we are cloudy and sitting right at freezing. Many folks in the low to middle 30s, you start to increase those temperatures the further west that you go as we see perhaps a little bit of clearing further to the west but we continue to see in our highest elevations the potential for a few snow showers pushing on through not amounting to much but it is something to watch we will start to clear out though as we head through tonight low 20s calming winds and a hard freeze likely out there for tonight details though on when things finally start to warm up at least temporarily that's in a few minutes steve Evan, thank you. Today is Equal Pay Day, a unique way of illustrating the impact of the gender pay gap. Men are paid more than women on average, but Equal Pay Day each year shows the disparity in terms of time instead of dollars and cents. The average full-time working woman has to work about two and a half months more than the average man to bring in what he earned last year. The good news is the pay gap has been slowly shrinking in the past two decades. President Biden is facing backlash from environmentalists over his approval of a massive oil drilling project in Alaska. It's a major reversal after he promised no more drilling on federal lands. CBS's Ed O'Keefe has the latest. This decision is a complete reversal from the stance then candidate Biden took more than three years ago at a campaign stop in New Hampshire. No more drilling on federal lands, period, 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 period. Instead, the approval of the multi-billion dollar Willow Project will allow oil giant ConocoPhillips to operate three drill sites on federal land in Alaska's North Slope. 
Leases to drill in the region were approved in the 1990s, so the company may have standing in court if the Biden administration were to try to block the drilling at all. The Interior Department says this plan blocks ConocoPhillips' initial plan of also drilling in two other spots. That's not stopping critics of the decision from weighing in. Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey says the decision leaves an oil stain on the administration's climate accomplishments. And the environmental group Sierra Club warned we will suffer the consequences of this for decades. Officials say oil from the project would produce roughly 239 million metric tons of greenhouse gas over 30 years, about the same as emissions from 1.7 million cars in the same amount of time. The White House also says it plans to preserve the entire U.S. Arctic from other parts of Alaska from future drilling. All three members of Alaska's congressional delegation are on board with this, saying it's going to create jobs. And the decision's a reminder that when it comes to environmental policy, crime, even bank bailouts, at times President Biden is at great odds with members of his own party. Ed O'Keefe, CBS News, Los Angeles. White House officials say they are taking steps to lower everyday costs for Americans, specifically the price of health care, prescription drugs, home heating, and broadband access. The White House says the Federal Communications Commission will release additional funds this week to support the Affordable Connectivity Program. It gives eligible households a $30 monthly credit toward their Internet service plan. Meanwhile, Health and Human Services is releasing more than half a billion dollars to help low-income families cover home heating costs. HHS is also announcing details for an inflation rebate on certain drugs. President Biden is in California to address gun safety today. He is unveiling largely symbolic executive actions to ensure vendors follow background check protocols. They include asking the Attorney General to enforce existing laws and to clarify who has to follow them. The visit also includes a meeting with the families and victims of January's mass shooting in Monterey Park, California. That's where a shooter opened fire in a dance studio while the Asian American community was celebrating the Lunar New Year. 11 people died in that shooting. The mass shooting was one of 110 in the U.S. so far this year. Lawyers for Tiger Woods went to court to fight claims from the golfer's former living girlfriend who wants to throw out a non-disclosure agreement she signed when they started dating. Lauren Herman is citing a federal law that allows exemptions for victims of sexual abuse or assault, but she's offered no further details on any perpetrator. CBS's Nikki Batiste reports. Golf superstar Tiger Woods is slamming his former girlfriend Erica Herman after she filed an additional lawsuit seeking to void a non-disclosure agreement she signed with Woods back in 2017. Herman is arguing she should be released from the NDA, citing the Speak Out Act, which Congress passed into law in December, allowing exceptions for victims of sexual assault or abuse. Woods' lawyers say Herman is not a victim of sexual assault or abuse and that her position is utterly meritless. They also point to a previous court filing where Herman checked no when asked, does this case involve allegations of sexual abuse? CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson. The question is really what Erica Herman comes back with if she's able to kind of specifically allege allegations here that would potentially trigger the law. We don't know how specific the judge is going to require that she be. They parted ways last fall and shortly after, Herman sued Woods for $30 million, claiming his agents had her pack for a trip and then permanently locked her out, breaching an oral agreement over living arrangements. Woods denies they had an agreement. The bottom line here is that Herman wants to air these disputes, that she wants to have her day in a court, not in a private arbitration, and that she believes her chances of success are better if the non-disclosure agreement does not apply. CBS News has reached out to Herman's lawyers for comment, but have not heard back yet. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, New York.